Hi everybody, Jean back with another Mars Anomalies video. This is another Raptor Zone Saturn Arc collaboration. And are we looking at an extinction level event in Elysium Planitia, where we speculate we may have found giant horseshoe crab remnants east of Insight Lander. Located in this region to the east of Insight Lander, Inside Land, of course, is located here yeah, in the top left with Curiosity Rover down here yeah, in Gal Crater. To the east of the Inside Lander, we've got these two regions in which my friend Saturn Ark may have found these remnants of uh, horseshoe crab like creatures, obviously very ancient and fossilized. So a bit of background before we start. Uh, this is from a presentation delivered by Dr. Brandenburg, who's a plasma physicist. To quote, Mars was apparently Earth-like for most of its history with an ocean and persistent greenhouse. Furthermore, Mars experienced multiple devastating catastrophes, one of which is an uh, impact that formed the Lyot Impact Basin, which apparently collapsed Mars's climate and dried up the oceans, and secondly, following an indeterminate period, Mars suffered a bizarre nuclear disaster. There's the reference, and you can find it at that URL, which I'll include below. So this is all courtesy of uh, Dr. Brandenburg's work. My hypothesis is that uh, due to Earth-like conditions, creatures similar to horseshoe crabs lived on Mars. They grew to epic proportions due to the lower gravity. And if you look at the size of uh, the horseshoe crabs found on Earth, we know that they become rather huge. Mega flooding occurred with the initial impact in a layout impact basin. The oceans and lakes dried up and left mud and water pools scattered about. Water-based life forms like horseshoe crab-like creatures seem to have survived in the mud and surrounding water pools. These life forms appear to have been killed and stopped in their tracks, probably due to the nuclear explosion nearby. They then decomposed and fossilized and uh, today we're only seeing the tracks and fossilized remnants on the surface of Mars. And then additionally Elysium Planitia, the plains where they appear to have lived, is close to the first nuclear explosion in Mars Acidalium, where the antinode is and just south to the second nuclear explosion in Utopia Planum and then the mega flooding and nuclear explosions devastated the Martian surface as seen in all the anomalies and artifacts that uh, researchers like myself are discovering. So we're looking at uh, Dr. Brandenburg's paper here, evidence for large anomalous nuclear explosions in Mars's past and uh, he has another map courtesy of uh, Dr. Brandenburg as well, showing the two areas in which uh, these massive nuclear explosions took place. One very close to Cydonia, and uh, we have the Opportunity Rover over there, just to the south, and then uh, in Galaxius Chaos, near where the Curiosity Rover is, also where we find the Insight Lander and close by Elysium Planitia. So this is an article from Wikipedia, we'll also include these links below, where they talk about uh, two theories and uh, the mainstream scientists seem to be in two minds as to what happened on Mars in this area. The one group speculates there was giant flooding uh, that started up here near Cerebrus Fosse and uh, flowed down 
into Elysium Planitia in the southwest direction. And then there's the other group that says uh, this is lava flow. So I'm going with the first group that proposes there was uh, a lot of flooding in the area. I speculate there was flooding as um, I've shown you in previous Elysium Planitia videos near Inside Lander that uh, there's what looks like water seeping up through the Martian surface running down sides of hills and craters. So the first photograph we're analyzing and I'll include all the reference material below. You can find the links there. Flow obstructions and wakes southeast of Elysium Planitia acquired on the 8th of May 2007 at a resolution of 25 centimeters per pixel. We're analyzing anomalies found in the JP2 black and white map projected file. Unfortunately, none of the anomalies appear in the merged RGB color strip. He has a crop from the low res JPEG and we'll be checking out amongst others these uh, strange anomalies. We've left these strange tracks in the Martian surface. Also the constant width and depth don't look like uh, regular boulders that have rolled down sides. This area is also very flat and smooth. So we'll have a look at a typical boulder that's rolled down a hill towards the end of the video. So this region is located 2.51 degrees south, 164.51 degrees east. And uh, as you can see from the surrounding terrain, this is a very smooth, flat area. The anomalies we're looking at were found there. So this is uh, from a very low angle, very low elevation. Checking out the first anomaly that's left this trench behind it. Looks like a track. Constant width and depth. And then uh, what looks like a fossilized, decomposed artifact over here. And then there's one next to it. Check out the straight lines. Takes a curve over here to the right, and then to the left again. This one over here starts off like an S bend over there arcs along here and then comes down straight this way. He has a zoomed out view from the high view. We're looking at uh, these two anomalies over here. Check out the straight track that's been left in both cases. Very long as well. And a closer look at the first anomaly and then uh, we compare these tracks to similar tracks left by these horseshoe crabs on earth. I've uh, grayscaled these images just to make it easier to compare the high rise photograph with these photographs taken on earth. Check the constant depth and constant width of these tracks as well. So the first one is located here and it looks like uh, one of these creatures may have uh, died here, decomposed and fossilized, leaving this rim and then uh, some ridges in the center. So if we superimpose one of these uh, horseshoe crabs in this, this is what it looks like. And, uh, it's also very huge, it's about 60 or so meters across and if we turn the crab around and uh, we take into account that the shell is very thin yeah, next to this round ridge, uh, this area will decompose first leaving the harder part uh, to decompose later 
check out that. And uh, with wind erosion, we expect to find some of this material gathered around the creature's uh, remains. So check that out. Just thought I'd pop that in there for interest. And then we're going to be looking at this anomaly here, which is a bit smaller. Closer look. Constant width and depth. And also, for comparison purposes, check that out. You've got this small little ridge on either side, like we have here as well. And these two examples. And uh, that's it up close. This one's about uh, 40, 45 meters across. And so, decomposed, fossilized, and eroded remains over there by the looks of it. And then another one to the north, also a very straight path or track, constant width and depth. There it is up close. Next photograph, vent belonging to the Cerebrus Tholi, acquired on the 24th of March 2008 at 25 centimeters per pixel resolution. I'll be showing you images cropped from the JP2 black and white map projected file. And as with the previous anomalies, uh, none were found in the merged RGB color strip. There's a crop from the low res JPEG and it's located 1.15 degrees south, 160.53 degrees east. So in this very flat, smooth terrain in this high rise photograph here. And uh, up close at a low angle, very close to the surface, we see another one of these straight tracks or paths, constant width and depth, the slight ridge on either side, and right there, another little mound, which could be uh, another one of these fossilized decomposed creatures. As the high-rise photograph zoomed out, showing the anomaly and its track, not to scale, a little bit closer up, and then uh, one to one scale. This one is about, I'd say, 15 to 20 meters across. Here's a high rise photograph I thought I'd include for reference, which does show a boulder which is rolled down a hill or a slope leaving the characteristic sort of Morse code dot dash path. There's the boulder right there. An irregular upright boulder, they call it. It's about six meters tall and about 3.5 meters wide. And uh, yeah, we can see where it originated, rolled down, leaving uh, this dotted path not like uh, these crab-like creatures that have left constant width and depth track. There's the boulder right there. So for comparison purposes, uh, these definitely don't look like boulders that have rolled across this plain, which is flat as well. So let's go back to Elysium Planitia and check this out in Google Earth Mars. So there the two areas are in which uh, my friend Saturn Ark discovered these anomalies and uh, they're about 242 kilometers apart. And there's uh, another anomaly over here which I'll do in a future video of what looks like some major construction work on the Martian surface. 
and I uh, just want to show you where Insight Lander is, it's right there. This is the area up here where they propose uh, there was a flood, water coming from this area flooding the plain. Curiosity rivers down here. So it looks as if um, NASA is very, very interested in this section of the planet and we can understand why I guess. So this is also where I showed you these strange structures, blocks, water seeping up through the Martian surface, running down sides of hills and down into craters, as well as a strange UFO shaped craft, possibly one of these blocks, ancient ruins with 90 degree angles and flat sides. So do let us know what you think of this hypothesis and uh, the possibility that these might be ancient fossilized creatures that were living uh, in this area where there was lots of water and mud as we'd expect from these types of crabs here on earth. Thanks so much for watching and for your time. I hope this was informative and interesting and uh, possibly, who knows, we might have discovered something really interesting. I'll see you soon with some more. Take care. Bye-bye for now.